Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. We begin with Allah's blessed name. We praise Him and we glorify Him as He ought to be praised and glorified. And we pray for peace and for blessings on all His noble messengers and in particular on the last of them all, the blessed Prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. And I say in particular because I am Muslim and this is the Prophet who I follow. So in particular, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. <coughs> I greet you wherever you are, from the, the studios of the Islamic Broadcasting Network here in my beautiful Caribbean island of Trinidad. Uh, wherever you may be in the world and you are viewing this broadcast, uh, live streaming on uh, IBNTT.net and also on YouTube on IBN Master. So wherever you are in the world and you are viewing this program, even here in Trinidad, uh, we greet you with assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And again, once more, uh, we remind you uh, that uh, our latest book, uh, Alhamdulillah is now finished. I'm just doing the touching up work. And uh, the title of the book, you'll see it on the screen just now, uh, is Dajjal, that is Dajjal, the false messiah, uh, Dajjal, the Quran, and Awwalul Zaman, or the beginning of history. It's going to be a little bigger than my last book on. Uh, methodology for study of study of the Quran and uh, we will be sending it for uh, formatting uh, the cover design is almost complete the back cover now to be finished and uh, then it'll be go going for printing um, we, st we still don't have all the funds we need to uh, to to pay the printry but uh, we are expecting inshallah that uh, more donations will come um, so the book will soon be printed, inshallah. Uh, but you can order in advance. Uh, you can go to my um, my online bookstore, uh, imranhussein.com. I hope we can get it at the bottom of the screen. www.imranhussein.com, my online bookstore. And you can place an order, pre-order for the book on Dajjal. This is the first book on Dajjal. Uh, I said that we expect the price would be about 15 pounds, uh, but this will be for those who are making their orders from the rich countries, the United States and Britain and Europe and so on. Uh, there we are, the book on the screen now. Uh, but if you're ordering the book from other countries where the standard of living is lower, then the price will be less than that. But you can make your pre-order now uh, for the book in English and also in French because the French translation is taking place as I speak. Uh, so that's the first uh, first uh, announcement reminding you about that book. I hope to be writing four more books on the Jal. Let me remind you one more time so that you can raise your hands and make dua that Allah most kind might give me life uh, to be able to complete them. 
the second book on Dajjal, which is already being written, is uh, from Jesus, the true Messiah, to Dajjal, the false Messiah, or the Antichrist, uh, a journey in Islamic eschatology. Uh, the third book is uh, on Dajjal and money. Uh, the fourth book will be on Dajjal and women. That is the modern feminist revolution. Um, and the last one will be on Dajjal, the Quran, and Akhirul Zaman, or the end of history. And I know that these five books will not complete the subject of Dajjal, but I'm 75 years of age now. And it's becoming increasingly difficult to sit down for hours and hours and hours and hours writing and writing and writing. Uh, so I have Allah has blessed me with so many brilliant students now all over the world. I have a very brilliant student there close to Zurich in, um, in Switzerland. I have a brilliant student there in Bangkok. I have a lot of brilliant students in, in London. I have brilliant students, mashallah, all over the world. May Allah grant that they may rise in knowledge. So they will write the other books on the Jal, inshallah, that I will not be able to write. Um, I ask you to kindly raise your hands and make dua that Allah might give me life long enough and may allow me to write these five books on the Jal. And then I told you that on the 5th of November, uh, the 5th of November, uh, it says, Yawmul Ahad, or the first day of the week, Sunday, at 10.30 in the morning, we have planned a brainstorming session um, uh, to discuss how do we respond to the predicament, the challenge, the awesome challenge of this transformation taking place in the world of money. That uh, we, we anticipate while others are eating their biryani and going to sleep, and yet others are fighting over peanuts, we anticipate the demonetization of all paper money meaning that you cannot use paper money as money anymore. If you have the paper money and a certain time expires, then it'll be worthless, you can use it as wallpaper, yeah. Uh, the, it's called demonetization. I apologize for this long word. So we anticipate, we who are keeping our eyes trained on what is happening in the world, and who are searching in the Quran and in the Sunnah to understand what is happening in the world and to seek to respond to the changes in the world appropriately and in accordance with the truth and in a manner pleasing to Allah and which will allow us to protect our faith. While others are eating their biryani and going to sleep, we are doing this. So we want to know how to respond. A hundred years ago when the transformation was taking place from real money, that is gold and silver coins, to this monopoly money that we now have, and we have bogus fatwa, oh, it's so shameful and disgraceful, bogus fatwa that this paper money is halal. When that transformation was taking place a hundred years ago, it appears that the world of Islamic scholarship was asleep. I like that French term, they say, fair dodo. My, my grandmother's sister died at the age of 104 here in Trinidad. And uh, she grew up as a child at the time when the French expressions were still being used in Trinidad. So she never referred to the city where I now live, uh, San Fernando by that name, San Fernando. No, she always called it Pitibug, Pitibug. <laughs> and uh, so she used to use the term dodo, to sleep, dodo. It's still being used here in Trinidad. It's a French term, fair dodo. So at that time, 100 years ago, the world of Islamic scholarship was in the state of fair dodo. They were sleeping. And they did not even understand what was happening in the world of money. 
and they, they failed and failed miserably to respond to what was happening in the world of money at that time when the change was taking place from gold and silver coins to paper money. And then when the change took place from, from the, the Bretton Woods monetary system to the petrodollar monetary system in the 1970s, the world of Islamic scholarship was again fair dodo, fall asleep. Or they didn't know how to respond. They, wasn't, they were not even conscious of what was happening in the world. That is the pathetic, pathetic reality that we face. But now, no. Now we have many, many, many of our people who are conscious, who are aware of what is happening, and who can perceive that the, we are on the verge of the demonetization of all paper money. Uh, remember what, Britain, what India did uh, 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 one year ago, demonetizing the 1,000 rupee note and the 500 rupee note. And this was a cue, this was a sign. The government of India was betraying the Hindu religion where are the pundits who will stand up and say that? Why is, it, why is it an Islamic scholar has to say that your religion is being betrayed by that government in India? When they acted on behalf of Wall Street, yes, that's what they did, to de demonetize the uh, 1,000 rupee note and the 500 rupee note, and the European Union is demonetizing the 500 euro note, and around the world, this movement, this, this transformation away from paper money to electronic or digital, and now is being called virtual money, is taking place. That we're leaving the real concrete world, and we are going into a make-believe world. They call it a virtual world. That's where mankind is moving, yes away from the concrete world to a, a, a virtual world. This transformation is taking place. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe it won't be within one year, maybe be two, maybe three years from now, but not too long from now. And it will be complete, no more paper money, and only electronic and digital money. If you're listening to me uh, in Trinidad, we want to discuss the subject on November the 5th at the Jama Masjid in San Fernando at 10.30 in the morning. And uh, uh, you cannot walk in. This is a private session. If you want to attend, you must contact us. So we register you, okay? So we know who are those who are coming. And there are some unwelcome guests that we would not want to have. You know who I'm talking about. So. So if you want to attend uh, that brainstorming session, it's a, it's a session in which we'll be sharing views with each other and discussing views with each other, how to respond. I will lead the discussion. Um, but today, not only are we inviting you to come and join us, but you must send an email to my, you get my email address at the bottom of the screen. Uh, you can also send an email to IBN. Uh, they will put their email address at the bottom of the screen. Uh, you can also call at IBN to say we want to attend this session uh, at the Jama Masjid San Fernando. Please do not come and just walk in without registering yourself. You don't have to pay for registration. You're also going to get lunch. You don't have to pay for lunch. All right, but don't just come and walk in. Please do not, do not, do not just come and walk in. We don't want you to do that because there will be some unwelcome guests. We don't want, you know who I'm talking about. So you must register. But today we will, we will in anticipation of that session on the 5th of November, incidentally, if you are abroad and you want to come to Trinidad, to attend that session, which will last from 10.30 and maybe until a little bit after Salat al-Zuhar. We'll have lunch, and then we can also continue the discussion. Uh, you can come from abroad as well. We have already have some people who are coming from abroad, 
Uh, there was one who wanted to come all the way from Egypt, but unfortunately, he could not make it. Uh, brother, I hope we will be able to come and visit you in Egypt, inshallah. Uh, sometime I was once a student in Egypt for one year. Um, so today what we'll do is we'll have the brainstorming session, but here on live on IBN. Uh, you can call in with your calls, and we, whenever you call, we will interrupt the program to take your call. The number is at the bottom of the screen. You can also call from abroad, but I hardly think there will be many people viewing the program live from abroad because we did not advertise it properly. Um, I, don't have, I don't have my laptop with me because the screen has gone bad. There's a ribbon that connects the the laptop with the screen, and that has to be replaced. So I can't um, receive your emails uh, live, but you can send an email to IBN if you want uh, with your question, and uh, they will write it out and bring it for me. Uh, or you can call on the phone, the bottom of the screen. At the bottom of the screen, you get the numbers there um, with your questions or with your comments on the subject. How do we respond? to this challenge of electronic and digital money, which is now on its way. Um, I said to you that I have only one month left before I travel again, um, inshallah. And I will be gone for several months. But there's a message for you if you are in Britain, uh, if you are in France, if you're in Belgium, if you're in Switzerland. Uh, and that is that um, in late December, I will be in Britain in November for, for a few days, but then after that I'll go over to France, inshallah. Um, but in late December, I, ha I have to go to Belgrade. We have the launching of my book on methodology for the study of the Quran, uh, which has been translated to the Serbian Bosnian language. And the launching of that book will take place in Belgrade in, um, in mid-December. So when I return from Belgrade, then I'll come to Britain, inshallah. And if you are in London and you like to have me, uh, I'm not having any public lectures, but all you have to do is to organize a group, small group, not more than 25 people, and maybe have a small dinner uh, some simple meal, and I will come and spend the evening with you and spend a few hours uh, in discussions and answering questions and in introducing Islamic eschatology or the study of the end time. Uh, if you would like to organize such a session and you are in London or in Manchester or in Birmingham, these three cities, then do please send me an email and I'll put you in touch with my students who are doing the organization. And we'll see whether we can put an evening for you to come and sit with you and spend the evening with you and have a small meal and have a nice long discussion session and answering questions. Remember, this is London, mostly London, but also Manchester and Birmingham and the areas close to these three cities. But if you're in France, no matter where in France you are, in Belgium, and you like to organize a session, uh, my French is not that good, but I remember I was in the south of France, and uh, we had a session, and the fellow who was supposed to do the translation to English, I was not at all happy with his work, so I took over, and I spoke for two and a half hours in French. <laughs> Yes, they must have enjoyed my French. <laughs> they must have enjoyed my broken French. Anyhow, I tried my best. But if you, if you would like to have a session in France, in any one of the cities of France, in Lyon, for example, in Paris, uh, do please send me an email. And uh, the group should not be more than 25. And we can have some small dinner or so, some couscous or whatever it is. And uh, I will spend the whole evening with you a few hours in discussion session. I can hold my whole in a French discussion in French, but if we want to have a 
serious talk, then I'll need someone to help me with translations to English. That is the, um, the news for you if you are in Britain, if you're in France, if you're in Switzerland, in Geneva, in Lausanne, whatever you are, small groups of people. Uh, the same thing I want to say for Trinidad. Um, that is that uh, if you are in Trinidad and you would like me to come and have an evening with you, not in the masjid, no, not in the masjid, but in a private home or in a, sm in a hall or something, and a small group of people, I know most of the young people would be interested in meeting with me, then send me an email or you can call on the phone to um, organize a session, and I'll be happy. I'll be happy to spend an evening with you, inshallah. All right, here are some questions. Uh, dear Sheikh, I have been told by a Christian that he will never convert to Islam because he read in the Hadith that the Prophet said, that the mind of a woman is deficient. What's your opinion? The Quran says something. And if the Hadith says something else which is in conflict with the Quran, what do you do? You know that that Hadith didn't come from the Prophet, it came from those who want to corrupt the religion. The Quran says that Allah created all human beings with perfection. He says that in the Quran, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ التَّقْوِيمِ The Quran says that there's no defect at all in Allah's creation. That's right. مَا تَرَى فِي خَلْكِ الرَّحْمَانِ مِنْ تَفَاوُتِ فَرْجِئِ الْبَصَرَ هَلْ تَرَى مِنْ فُدُورِ Do you find any defect at all? So there's no defect in the creation of a woman. There's no defect in the creation of the mind of a woman. So where did this rubbish come from? If something is in conflict with the Quran, then take it and put it aside and stay with the Quran. The Quran is the absolute authority in Islam, absolute authority. And the Hadith has authority when it is in harmony with the Quran. Yes, you must obey. When it is harmony with the Quran, but if a hadith is in conflict with the Quran, we stay with the Quran. Next question. Sheikh, when do you think the Dajjal will appear in our dimension of time? Good question. MashaAllah. I, uh, <laughs> I congratulate you because there are very few people who can even ask this question. They have such little knowledge of the subject of Dajjal. Um, okay, let us go back to the hadith of a Sahih Muslim. Uh, the Prophet, Allah's blessings be upon him, that said that when Dajjal is released, he will live on earth for 40 days. One day, yawmun kasana, one day which will be like a, a year, Yawmun ka shahr, one day, which will be like a month. Yawmun ka jum'a, one day, which will be like a week. Wa sa'iru ayyamihi ka ayyamikum. And all his days, meaning all the rest of his days, like your days. So it is at the end of his mission. After he has completed stage one, and stage two, and stage three, only then will his day be like our day. Only then would he be in our world of space and time. Only then would we see him before us as a human being, as a human being. So we have to ask ourselves, has the first stage been completed? A day like a year? Has the second one been completed? A day like a month? When will the third one be completed? A day like a week. My book entitled Jerusalem in the Quran has answered that question. 
And the, the second book of mine, entitled Suratul Kaf in the Modern Age, has a chapter on the Quran and time. I wish I did not have to write that chapter. I really wish I did not have to write it. Because that chapter should have been written by my teacher, Maulana Dr. Fadl Rahman Ansari Rahimahullah, or it should have been written by his most learned student of all, not me. His most learned student is Maulana Siddiq Ahmed Nasir, or by Maulana Wafi Muhammad, or by Dr. Ibrahim, Abul Fadl Mohsin Ibrahim in uh, Durban, South Africa, or by Sheikh Ali Mustafa. I'm the least learned of them all. So I had to write that chapter entitled The Quran and Time. And in that chapter, you'll find me uh, uh, giving my views, explaining this hadith. Um, my view, my answer to your question is that we, we, it is my opinion that we are now at that moment in time when a day like a month is coming to an end and Pax Britannica, sorry, Pax Americana is in now, now in irreversible decline and uh, Pax Judaica is preparing itself to replace Pax Americana. Pax Judaica, of course, would mean Israel replacing the United States of America as a new ruling state in the world. And uh, when that happens, then a day like a week will then commence. Has a day like a week commenced as yet? There are some of my students who have gone ahead of me and have said, yes, 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 it's only going to commence with 9-11. Uh, no, I don't think. I don't have that view, no. I believe that uh, Pax Judaica can only commence when there's no more United Nations organization, no. And no more international monetary fund. They have to go down into the garbage bin uh, so that Israel can emerge as a ruling state in the world. Uh, Pax Judaica, which says we want to turn away from the godlessness of Pax Britannica and Pax America. We want to turn away from the secular world and we want to return to the religious way of life. That's what Israel is going to do. And we must enforce God's laws and so on. Yes, all that's what Israel is going to do. And Israel won't be a secular state, it'll be a kingdom, but a king. Uh, then you know you're in a day like a week. And only when a day like a week has come to an end, only then would Dajjal be in our world of space and time. Uh, the Malhama has to take place, the Great War, the nuclear war. Uh, and the conquest of Constantinople has to take place uh, before Dajjal will appear in human form. Remember Constantinople. Constantinople is the name of the city. Remember that if the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam, called a city by a certain name, then it is the sunnah. Are you listening to me? It is the sunnah to use that name for the city, the sunnah. If he referred to a city by a certain name, then it is the sunnah to use that name for the city. You can give the city a nickname, like New York is called Big Apple. No problem with that. But the name of the city must not be changed. You cannot abandon the name Constantinople. No. Because Nabi Muhammad wasalam, used the name Constant. Are you listening to me? Because the Prophet used the name Constantinople, you cannot abandon the name Constantinople. You can give a nickname to the city. You want to call it by other names by all means, but this name cannot be abandoned. So he said, لَتَفْتَحَنَّ الْقُنْسْتَنْتِنِيَ You will most certainly conquer Constantinople. Today they call it Istanbul, and they prohibit the use of the name Constantinople. That is wrong. And I raise my voice against it. I take my time with this because the prophet referred to the city as Yatrib. 
Yes, he did that. If you don't remember, I'm reminding you. He said, Umranu baytil maqdis kharabu yatrib. Since he referred to the city by the name of Yatrib, of course there is no problem in calling or describing the city as Medina to Nabi. No problem with that, but you're not changing the name. No, you're referring it to a, as the name of the city of the Prophet, wasalam, but the name that the Prophet uses is Yatrib. And in the Quran, Allah refers to it as Yatrib. So you cannot abandon that name as you have done. And all that I am doing is pointing out to you that you cannot abandon the name. All that I am doing to you is reminding you that it is not prohibited to use the name Yatrib. All that I'm reminding you, it is not derogatory, the name Yatrib. That's all I'm doing. That's all, that's all, that's all. So don't tell me I'm prohibited from using the name Yatrib. Okay, there's a call from Diego Martin. Hello? Assalamu okay. alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Sheikh, yeah. um, do you think now with the with the threat to the U.S. dollar by the Chinese currency, do you think that this could provoke the war rather than, say, North Korea? And in which case, um, Trump might be only the scapegoat that they will blame, but it will really be those who control the monetary system who will be, uh, who will be um, doing this. They will imagine. Are you in Australia? Yes, yes. Really? Yeah. I didn't think when the Italians were so, so advanced in their thinking. <laughs> yeah. I, I thought most people in Trinidad fair don't know. Yeah, yeah. I, I congratulate you, Diego Martin. Yes, I congratulate okay. you, mashallah. I'm happy, I'm mm. proud that mm. I have people in Trinidad who are so advanced in their, in their thinking. Yes, mm. I think... The main cause of the nuclear war which is coming is the mountain of gold. You know what I'm talking about. The mountain of gold. The Prophet said, alayhi salatu was salam, hadith is in Sahih Bukhari. He said that the river Euphrates will uncover a mountain of gold. Euphrates is in Iraq. It will uncover a mountain of gold, and people will fight for that gold. And 99 out of every 100 will be killed. And each one will say, I will be the one who will survive, but the believers must not touch that gold. When, in 1974, Henry Kissinger fooled King Faisal and got him to agree to this manifestly haram agreement, that, you know, that Saudi Arabia will sell its oil for only U.S. dollars, only U.S. dollars. And this is what the Chinese are now challenging. This is what the Chinese are challenging. The agreement was that United, Saudi Arabia and the Arab oil producing countries after that and OPEC would sell their oil for only U.S. dollars, which meant that there would be a tremendous perpetual demand for U.S. dollars since oil is the biggest commodity traded in the world market. And that will, once there's a demand for the US dollar, it survives, yes. And that will allow the US dollar to fly high. This is the petrodollar monetary system. And when this came into being in 1974, the prophecy of Prophet Muhammad was fulfilled. Yes, it was fulfilled in 1974. But if you want to sit down on a sofa and wait for a mountain of the metal to come out of the river, by all means, keep waiting. Keep waiting. So I agree with you. That's right. What the Chinese have done is very, very skillful. You know that the articles of agreement of the International Monetary Fund created by Dajjal prohibits the use of gold as money. The reason why they prohibited it is because you cannot have this bogus monetary system. It will not survive if gold is in the market. 
The mm. good money will destroy the bogus money. So they had to prohibit the use of gold as money. That's what the Articles of Agreement of the International Monetary Fund have done. And by gold, when they say gold is prohibited, they imply silver as well. Probably they didn't have the courage to put in the word silver, but they meant silver as well. So what the Chinese have done is very skillful. And uh, it is certainly an attack on the petrodollar monetary system. The Chinese are saying, we are going to buy your oil from you, and China is now the biggest customer that the Saudis have, surpassing the United States. So if your biggest customer says, I'll pay you in Chinese yuan, but when I pay you in Chinese yuan, you can convert the yuan to, to gold. We'll convert it for you to gold at whatever is the market price of gold. So you'll have gold, real money. If the US, if, sorry, if Saudi Arabia agrees to this, and I don't see any way that the Saudis can escape, they're, they're stuck in this now, and they're in a big predicament now in, in the economy, then that will be the beginning of the end of the petrodollar monetary system. Um, so yes, the, the big war that's coming is because of the attack on the petrodollar monetary system, which will become the collapse of the US dollar. But they cannot allow the US dollar to collapse other than in a big war. Because if the US dollar collapses, there'll be chaos, there'll be anarchy in the United States. That's the country of the world where you had the most guns in the hands of people. Oh, yes. There will be anarchy in the United States if the petrodollar, if the US dollar collapses. So they, they'll have to hide the collapse of the monetary system in some kind of a big envelope like a, like a nuclear war. Um, so I agree with you that this is what is likely. But they have, they have to have a trigger to pull for the war to begin. And the war will not begin with a direct attack on Russia and China. They have to have some proxy. And I think they are fishing for war in Korea and using that to try to provoke Korea to respond to them with some kind of a military response and then use that as the excuse to launch a war in Korea, which will drag China into the war. And when China is dragged into war, then Russia will be dragged into the war and will become the nuclear war, whole war. OK. But I congratulate you on your question. I didn't realize that we had people in Trinidad who were so advanced in their thinking. I'm very happy about that. OK, another question. When do you expect World War III? I just answered that. Uh, Someone says, I have a lot of cash, paper money. What should I do with it? Answer, if you have a lot of paper money, they want you to put it in the bank. If you do not put it in the bank, then they'll give you a certain time. And after that, they will demonetize the paper. You cannot use the paper as money. So all that paper money that you have, you can use it as wallpaper. That's right. Would this be the first time in history? Oh, no. There have been many instances in history already where money has been used like wallpaper. That's right. Uh, so that's their plan. They want, you to, they want to force you to put your money in the bank. And we're going to be discussing this on the 5th of November. They use every single trick in the book to force you to put your money in the bank. So you can't put your money underneath the mattress anymore. Once your money is in the bank, then your money has become a hostage. Uh, but I've, I've spoken on this subject already. Um, and we'll be discussing this on the 5th of November. What are the implications? of having all your money in electronic money tomorrow. What are the implications? What I would do if I have a lot of paper money is I'll buy gold and silver. Uh, where do we buy gold and silver coins in Trinidad? We're going to discuss that subject, inshallah. So I'm not going to talk on that now. 
and uh, keep my money in gold and silver, or I'll buy land, or I'll buy animals. Because our Prophet said, do you know the hadith? He said, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, if you have land, hold on to your land. If you have animals, hold on to your animals. Hmm? So I, that, that's what I'll do with my paper money. But uh, you want to discuss with your mufti? Ask him whether the paper money is halal. Go and ask your mufti. Go and ask your maulana. Go and ask your sheikh. Ask them. If they close the door, knock and knock and knock and knock and knock until they open the door and ask them, is it halal? If he says, well, 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 maybe it is makro. And you can ask, well, why did you not say this to us all this time? Why is it 20 years now Imran has been talking on this subject and you remain so ominously silent? What is wrong with you? Ask them. Ask them. If it is halal, to explain to us why is it halal. Where is the proof? Okay. Uh, the next question is, but I have to live. And I cannot buy things with gold and silver. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. I remember I gave a khutbah in a masjid here in Trinidad. I won't mention the name. I don't want to embarrass anyone. How many years ago? Almost 10 years ago. And in that khutbah, this was, this was when the great collapse took place in 2008 in money. In that khutbah, I urged here in Trinidad that we should concentrate on building a market. If I had a large portion of land on the Churchill Roosevelt Highway or on the Solomon Ho Choi Highway, what would I do with that land? I would build a market. And in that market, there are store, stalls where people can come and buy and sell. And the market is open for Christians, for Jews, for everybody, but the market will be run on the basis of Islamic principles of business ethics, yes. And the world, of, the world will be wa watching with wonder, is this Islam? How come we waited so long for this? Why did you never brought Islam to this country? Eh? That's what I would do, I'd build a market. That's what I would do, I would build a market. And in that market, we'd use gold and silver coins, not gold really, but silver coins for buying and selling. The khutbah came and the khutbah went and nobody bothered. Nobody bothered. So, yes, if we can put our heads together and formulate a plan to establish a market, I don't think the government of Trinidad and Tobago will be so foolish. I do not think that the Trinidad and Tobago government would be so foolish as to put their foot in to try to stop us. I don't think they'll be so foolish with a capital F to put their foot in to try to stop us. Yes, if we want to build a market where people can buy and sell using money, which is real money, which the temple in Jerusalem at the time of Jesus, the temple in Jerusalem at the time of Jesus, let me remind the Christians, the temple in Jerusalem, we call it Masjid Al-Aqsa, you call it the temple, minted its own coins, yes, gold and silver coins, and they used the gold and silver coins for buying and selling. If the temple in Jerusalem used it, which government is be so stupid to try to stop us to do it, from losing it? Um, this is what we can do to build our own market. Dear Sheikh, we Muslims love our religion. That's very obvious. We are prepared to fight and to die for our prophet. We hear of events in Pakistan where an individual has... An individual has... Okay, that's all. I can't... I don't know what's the rest of the question. An individual has something. Next question. Sheikh, tell us something about the Mahdi. Not now. Not now. We're talking about money now. Uh, okay. 
an individual has controversial opinion of our religion and our brothers are not able to control themselves resulting in violence and that how should we act, react to people who claim our holy book does not say the truth? How should we react to people who claim that our holy book does not say the truth? You can reject Islam, you can reject the Quran, and that does not mean we have to wage war on you. Yeah. Our response to you would be, Lakum deenukum waliyadeen. To you, your religion, and to us, ours. So your rejection of Islam or your rejection of the Quran does not result in warfare. However, you have your religion and your way of life, and we have ours. If you want to step into our home, where we want to live the way of life of Islam, and in our home you want to wage war on the Quran, then it's time for us to take out the sword and get rid of you. That's right. This is, this is treason. This is sedition. This is trying to put a, a, throat, a sword on our throat inside of our home. That cannot be allowed. No. If you are living in your house and you have your religion and we living in ours and we have our religion and you reject ours and you say the Quran is false, our response is, lakum deenukum waliyadeen. That's right. You, you have your way, we have ours. That's a peaceful response. But you can't come into our house to wage war on our religion. No, we take out the sword for you. All right. I don't understand. Are you allowed to, to lie? It is allowed to lie to the Zionist people and rest the government. What are they lying about? I don't understand. Maybe you should speak. You should write to me in English. Uh, do you have any information concerning the Sea of Galilee? Or oh, the reason why he asks about the Sea of Galilee is because, do we have any more calls? I don't see any more. If you want to call in and give us your opinion, we'll be happy, very happy to hear your opinion. Maybe you would say something to us which will be of value, and we can then use that and have a discussion on that on the on the 5th of November in our brainstorming session. So do please call. I'm waiting for your calls. The number is at the bottom of the screen. Now then, the Sea of Galilee. The reason why he asks about the Sea of Galilee because the Sea of Galilee is in the Holy Land. And our prophet said about Gog and Magog. Do you remember what he said? He said that when Allah releases Gog and Magog, the first of them will pass by the Sea of Galilee on his way to Jerusalem. Well, the word Jerusalem is not in the Hadith, of course. The Prophet used the name Beitul Maqdis, like he used the name Yatrib, and he used the name Constantinople. So we should follow the Sunnah. The Sunnah is Constantinople, the Sunnah is Yatrib, and the Sunnah is Baytul Maqdis. He said the Gog and Magog will pass the Sea of Galilee on the way to Baytul Maqdis or Jerusalem. And they will start to drink the water. And by the time the last of them all pass, they will say there used to be water here. Jesus, Nabi Isa Islam, will not return until the Sea of Galilee is dry. The Christian doesn't know that. But we Muslims know that because we have Prophet Muhammad. Allah's blessing be upon him. Yes, Faisabad on the phone. Hello. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Uh, Maulana, our yeah. money is already tied up with the U.S. government. Um, we are re up um, things for fraudulent money and them kind of laws that they have um, put up on us already. How mm -hmm. we can deal with that? Our money is already tied up. Yeah. The first response is, if you borrow money, if you borrow money on interest, then Allah says in the Quran that if you turn away from the interest of the riba, falakum ru'usu amwalikum, you have an obligation, you have an obligation to repay 
the principal sum which was borrowed, you do not have an obligation to repay the interest. So what we would say if we are Pakistan, for example, and you have so many loans, so many loans, that's why they give you the loans. They give you the loans so they could tie your feet and make you a slave. That's why they give you the loans. And they're giving loans of what? Invisible money, paper money. They didn't, they didn't work for it, no sweat. I was using that bogus money to tie you up. So what we say to you is, yes, we borrow this money from you. And we repay whatever we borrowed from you. But we're not going to pay any interest, not now. Number two, we will repay you the money on the basis of our capacity to repay. On the basis of our capacity to repay. That's how we repay you the money. Um, so if Trinidad and Tobago borrowed money, and Trinidad and Tobago wants to follow a path in which there is a capacity to survive and escape slavery, then this is what Trinidad and Tobago should do. But we don't have that kind of government in this country. We have governments who have so blind, they have eyes and they can't see, that now the government says that if she is 17 years of age, she cannot be married. Yes, wait. All of you who support that legislation, all the political parties in parliament who supported that legislation, we who follow the religious way of life, we are telling you, wait until you go in the grave and you'll see what you'll do for challenging the law of God. Yes. So for those who are um, with, with debts and you cannot pay your debts, this is the way to respond. Another call from Diego Martin. Hello. Hello, Salaam alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum, Salaam. Sheikh, um, are you aware that some years ago, President and Kuma of Ghana, he appealed to all third world countries to band together and make a decision to stop paying interest. And this would have gotten out the, the countries from their perpetual debt. But nobody took him on. Okay, so I, okay I want you to do me a favor. My email address is at the bottom of the screen. Hello? Yeah. You find my email address at the bottom of the screen. Give me the um, evidence that Qu President Kwame Nkrumah um, ever made such a statement. Uh, give me the, the proof, okay? It's very important to me. Uh, Dr. Williams had very great respect for Kwame Nkrumah, and it was in 1964. Williams went on an African safari, yes. And one of his stops was, uh, was Ghana. He took a delegation from Trinidad to Ghana and he met with Kwame Nkrumah in Ghana in 1964. And then from there he went around and then he came to Cairo. And I was a student in Cairo. And we <laughs> invited to meet with him. And I met with him and I shook hands with him in Cairo. Uh, so please send me, take my email address and send me uh, the proof that Kwame Nkrumah made such a statement. Okay, we continue now with the questions. But I'm not getting any calls from you. What happened? I'm not getting any calls from you in which you will suggest to me, what can we do? What can we do as Muslims to set an example for the Christians and the Hindus in this country? that we Muslims are leading the way of responding to the predicament of electronic and digital money and virtual money. Oh, aren't you thinking? Come on, let me hear what you have to say. All right, we still have some time. Okay, what about the coming of Nabi Isa alayhi islam? He will descend after the Dajjal in order to kill him. So how will we be able to recognize Jesus alayhi salatu wasalam. What about the Mahdi? These are not questions connected with, um, with uh, money. I want questions and I want comments connected to money. We'll have another time to deal with the Mahdi and so on. Um, my son insists to ask me if cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, is halal. Oh, that's a good question. That's a good question. Is Bitcoin halal? What do you say? Hmm? What do you say? Tell me. What do you say? Answer. Money in the Quran 
And money in the sunnah is always money with intrinsic value. You never hear this from the khutbah, do you? You hear everything else on the khutbah, you will not hear this in the khutbah. No. Money in the Quran and money in the sunnah is always money with intrinsic value. The value of the money has to be in the money, okay? It is value created by Allah. Allah creates wealth, not George Soros. Bitcoin is like paper money. Bitcoin is like all other um, invisible, tangible, electronic money. It is fictitious money. And therefore, it cannot be halal. Bitcoin is now legalized by the government of Malaysia as legal, current, legal tender. The government of Malaysia has legalized Bitcoin as legal tender. Are you listening to me in Malaysia? Your government has legalized Bitcoin as legal tender, meaning you can use Bitcoin to buy and sell in Malaysia. But they will not legalize dinar and dirham. What a shame. What an awful shame for all the religious institutions in Malaysia who are supposed to be upholding the religion, for all the ustas and the maulanas and the shiuch and the muftis of Malaysia who are supposed to be upholding the religion. The dinar and dirham are not allowed as legal tender in Malaysia. You cannot use it to buy and sell. But Bitcoin is legal tender. Shame on you. Shame on you. Now then, we do not have any more, um, many more calls. I want to return in the few minutes we have to remind you that one form of riba, riba is of course buying and uh, borrowing and lending money on interest, but the one, another form of riba is uh, to rip off people. Okay, I gave you the hadith, to rip off people. And uh, um, this monetary system that we have is ripping off people. It is ripping off Algeria, it is ripping off Pakistan, ripping off Bangladesh, ripping off Indonesia, ripping off Africa. It's the biggest rip off of us all. So it is riba. How come we don't get a khutbah on riba? If you know any imam giving a khutbah on riba in Trinidad, please send me an email. I want to go and listen to him. Because I don't know, maybe Santa Claus have to come on a reindeer from the like North Pole to give a khutbah on riba because nobody else wants to do it. Huh? We need a khutbah on riba uh, so that we'll be able to understand the subject and people can be reminded. But before I end, let me remind you what I said last time, but uh, cash transaction and a credit transaction must have the same price. If the credit price is higher than the cash price, then the reason why it is higher than the cash price is because you have to wait for your money. And therefore, your money must be able to increase over time. Money increasing over time is called riba. Money that increases over time, the increase is called riba. So a cash transaction which is higher than a credit transaction, the price of the cash of the credit transaction is higher than the cash transaction. The difference between the two will be riba. So credit price and cash price must be the same. All right? Um, Morabaha is a credit transaction. The Islamic banks give you Morabaha, and it is a credit, a credit, a credit, a credit, a credit transaction. And the credit price is higher than the cash price. The difference between the two is riba. Do you hear me? The difference between the two is riba. You better understand now before you go in the grave. Because when you go in the grave, it will be too late for you. With your bogus fatwa. And your bogus guidance to the people with your Islamic banking system and your Islamic credit union and all this nonsense. I am sorry that I become so angry. But I've been talking for 20 years now. And I'm fed up and I am frustrated. So kindly forgive me if I become angry sometimes. Thank you. 
والسلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ